Hello and welcome to the vlog. With my team at work, I've been talking about this uh, Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon scene, Enter the Dragon, a uh, scene where, you know, Bob, Bob, Bob Wall breaks the board and he goes, boards don't hit back. It's not about criticizing breaking boards. It's really wider. It's really very interesting. Like I, was thinking about what it means to do martial arts for people outside our little world, our, our own bubble of, you know, practice. So uh, I've talked about this before, but imagine you're in a gathering for work, something that's not related to your martial arts, you know, party with friends or work, um, I don't know, Christmas dinner or something. And somehow the these people are not martial artists, imagine. And... So, oh, you know, you know martial arts. So somehow the topic comes up, right? Have you thought about what, like they say, oh, there's all these assumptions about what is it that you can show them because you're a martial artist. What does it mean for them, non-martial artists, right? And instead of making me prejudiced about what martial art truly is versus what it's not, these days what I think about is that the martial arts is just vast. So, you know, a lot of people imagine that because you know martial arts, you can do something physical that doesn't involve hurting someone else. You can do it in the air that they couldn't do, right? Some special skill. And you know, I was talking to my mother about Kung Fu this morning. And Kung Fu, as I've said here, you know, a skill, ability, some skill that comes through hard work. So, I mean, the conditions are, the, it has to be a, an extraordinary skill, not something everybody can do. And it has to come through hard work, you know, not something you wake up and have it, right? That combination of hard work and skill. You know, being able to do a very difficult kick in the air that takes a lot of years of training and some people may never be able to do with coordination and balance, qualifies as that. It's nothing wrong with that, even though in the past I would have been prejudiced against that because it wouldn't have been aligned with my own practice. It wouldn't have been aligned with what I do. I can't do that. We don't even train to do that. But it's entirely worth a while endeavor if that's what you want, as long as you're consistent with your goals. But if that was your martial art or part of your system or part of your, your train, you could do it. Or say, oh, let me show you something I can do. I mean, assuming you're in the mood to do that. I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying, oh, good. And it becomes like, wow, that's amazing because we couldn't do it, right? Another traditional skill that you would say is very martial artsy that a martial artist cannot do, that a non-martial artist will never dream of doing is doing a high kick and holding it, right? but there's millions and millions of martial artists that don't even, haven't even thought about that. It's not that they're not good at it, it's that they don't even train, they don't even think about that, including me, my system. But there's also obvious examples like BJJ and Judo wouldn't even attempt to do that, right? I very much doubt the Japanese Jiu Jitsu that I would attempt to do that. And this is not to judge good and bad, this is just to say the vastness of what it is. And why did I start saying boards don't hit back? Because another one of the skills that people associate that also don't involve killing someone in that party or in that dinner is to break something, right? Another skill that is very much associated with martial arts and yet I assume, just based on my little world, many more people don't even think of it than do it. Like I think it's a minority of people that practice board breaking or brick breaking, you know? Um, it's funny because I was talking also with some work colleagues the other day about this, like Bruce Lee was definitely not into board breaking or brick breaking. And when Pierre Burton asked him if he could break bricks, he could say, no, I probably break my hand. So he immediately discounted that, like he didn't, nah, I break, you know, I probably break my, my hand. Yet, James Lee 
his very good friend from Oakland that is tremendous influence on Bruce and one of the, in my opinion, sad parts of the stories that we never talk about James Jim Lee. James Jim Lee, he was an expert on brick breaking and he had this precision and he had developed it as a science that definitely qualifies as Kung Fu. It's a skill that very few people on earth have the way he did it with tremendous precision and not a gimmick, you know, not like fake material that a two, two year old can break, which is also something that happens. Um, you know, it's a his skill, it takes a lot of work. So it's Kung Fu, right? It's martial art for sure. Think about judokas, people doing judo. You know, they learn all this very, very coordinated art of balance and taking the balance of the opponent. One of the most incredible things for me. And yet, they wouldn't be able to do any of that, right? They don't train to do that. So, you know, if I was in that hypothetical party or dinner and they said, well, show me what you can do, there's nothing I can do that someone can appreciate. That's not in the martial art. Even though if I did a form slowly and well, the subtlety of what is doing a form for our system would be lost because the precision is in things like not tensing the hand, doing the right angle of the elbow, being relaxed, and things like that will not be perceived as something they can do. Probably someone will go and do it and say, I'm doing the same thing with you with zero training. They're not doing the same thing, but the qualities we're trying to train for what we train in my system would not be something that would be perceived as something they can't do, even though they can't do it. But it's almost like for a to, for a pre for them to have an appreciation of this, they would need a few classes on this. They would need to have some foundation, you know? So it's just the vastness of the martial arts world. I was just listening to this podcast, the Kung Fu movie guide podcast. Every now and then some of the guests are really interesting because some of the guests are martial artists, martial artists that also participate in movies. And you know how I think these are very, very, very separate skills. Yet there are some people that manage to do both, which is very difficult. And this guy got picked. I'm so sorry that I don't uh, have the name of the guest. Lauren Avedon. And he was in many of the good, uh, very famous martial, martial arts movies. I think in the late 80s, um, he worked with some of the biggest names of the industry. And he was he got picked because he could kick. The, the skill of kicking, you know, kicking. So kicking well, kicking in a way that is athletic. The other thing is, if you watch the movies of the Shaw Brothers, which I, I like a lot, you know, you've heard me say how I don't think that's actual Kung Fu because you know what's coming is choreography. But that doesn't mean those guys don't have a tremendous athleticism that very few people could do that. Those long scenes fighting and what it requires to do, the tremendous physicality, athleticism of those practices, none of that will prepare them to have a fight. But martial arts are way more than that. It's an expression, it's performance, it's coordination, it's dance, it's beauty, it's tradition, it's preservation. And they are doing things I wouldn't be able to even start doing. So instead of Getting close-minded, that's not martial art. It's just what a beautiful um, world of the martial arts that contains so many things. And we have all these examples of mastery, but the mastery could be in many aspects, you know? Uh, the same thing happens with the context of fighting. You know, like if, if a culture for example, I talked about the Mongolians, they developed that wrestling. This is, you know, I'm trying to talk about this example because it's very much outside of civilization. It just happened organically in that culture. And I think most cultures have developed a form of martial art, but they also do it culturally. And they naturally got to those rules. Don't kick, don't punch, just wrestle, take the balance of the guy. But also they wear a specific costume, not uh, unlike in judo, Olympic judo, you always have the gi. So now you exploit that because it's logical, because you've come up with this environment in which now it's considered an honor to win. 
So you're going to exploit it. So the way they grab themselves is counting on that particular costume. We're not talking about a civilized, I'm just talking about some Mongolian tribe of Northern Mongolia in the middle of the ice. And they are wrestler, wrestlers that nobody can touch. And yet they have adapted to a series of rules. They have adapted to their environment. They have adapted to the clothes they wear. So there's nothing wrong with that. Instead of criticizing it, we say, what a wonderful variety. I just look at all this variety and choose what's going to make me happy and train hard and get better at it in a way that you can scientifically test if you're getting better at it, being opposed to pressure and resistance in the environment that you want to excel at. Be safe. <laughs>